Hey, we're in for a real treat here, Steve-o. Yep, the best of the best. The greatest tries. And the most memorable moments and matches. The fiercest tackles. You'd know all about them, Steve-o. Hey, you don't think I was born looking like this. Anyway, what about the cock-ups? You'd know a lot about them, Eddie. Oh, thanks. This programme is a celebration of Rugby League, or Super League, as it's now known at the very top level, at its very best. And also at its worst, with some of the funniest cock-ups you're ever likely to see. Along with bell-ringing tackles that go to prove that Rugby League is a real man's game. And to get you in the mood, we're going to kick off with a procession of great Super League tries. Now, these are all great solo efforts. The product of speed, invention, and in many cases, just Pure genius. So get an eyeful of these beauties. But Lindsay got to it, and here's the fly of Carney. Brian Carney gets away from Keith Senior, and he's all the way down the line. And that is a terrific try for Brian Carney. They paid the huge prize. You see how Senior and Latati, Latiti went down the wrong one. They really went on the outside when they should give him plenty of room. But why on earth did the fullback not go for the legs? Look at Senior, he's come out of the line there. Marcus Bai was also in no man's land. And I cannot believe that a fullback of the experience of Richie Mathers decided to go for the scruff of the neck. This has been an absolute wonderful match. Lovely dink over the top by Deacon, he's after it himself. Swooped on by Briscoe, and Briscoe is away! And Briscoe's on his way for a fourth try, and the points will go home to Hull! Sean Briscoe, four tries, and Hull have the victory that has been so long in coming. Well, Phil did ask the question on the sideline, where will Widner score a try? They haven't got a man like this. Stanley Jean, oh, he's eluded three of them. This is going to be a great try for Stanley Jean and scored with the usual aplomb. Stanley Jean, he cut the witness defence to ribbons there. There's something, though, that the touch judge... Oh, no, he isn't. I thought the touch judge was unhappy about something. Steve Ganson just checked with him. And Stanley Jean, well, that was a real one-man show. Last Sunday against Pierre, but it couldn't have been as good as this. Oh, wonderful effort. They pay the price. Ralph especially going very, very high. Such a strong person. That's the reason why the touch judge just had a little bit of doubt. Not the best way to put the ball down, but uh, he just loves rugby league, this guy, doesn't he? And he's got all the qualities. Three or four years ago, quite a lot of people said that he was past it. This is like Vold. This is only his second game back. Former St. George Illawarra prop. It's 11. And here is Nathan Ward, he's broken through, and Ward will score for Warrington. Injured leg, nothing short of brilliant, and made the point. Cullen said, get back out there and do some stuff from the dummy half position. Talk about do some stuff. Wonderful effort here. Wigan yet again having all sorts of problems trying to get the first and second markers sorted out. They're slow to get back, slow position, and Nathan Ward, the man who can be brilliant at times. Hooper waits, they're right underneath the post. Here's Sculthorpe, engineer in chief. Oh, interception! A possible interception, it's Wainwright, the winger. Darren Albert's the quickest in Super League. Is he going to be quick enough? Wainwright! Wainwright skips away from Albert, and he has the legs to take him home. Why they went for that, Sculthorpe? It was surprising, but he read it exceptionally well. Look how he's looking to see where Albert is. See how he just moved back on the arc. This is what it means to a coach 
that goes in for the third try. He nearly lost his knickers, but it didn't matter. He was making it all the way. coming a little bit near to the post. Well, the 10 meters could be vital. He really should have had a look to see whether Sean Long had given up, which he knows he has, and he just humbles. I'm taking nothing away from the youngster scoring a vital try. It was a good effort, but you'll see acres of space. Now then, he could have made this kick a damn sight easier for Henry Paul. He could have come in at least five or six meters. He just lost it there, just slightly. Off to Tony, to Richard Horn. Quick hands, oh, he went without it. Here's danger, it's Jamie Lyon. Jamie Lyon for St. Helens. Too quick, too quick for all of Hull. Jamie Lyon for Saints under the sticks. It had to come, all that pressure in the first half, all that defence, a long-range effort would have to come about. The error, they were under a lot of pressure, and Jamie Lyon gleefully accepts it. Wonderful rhythm, nice style, he knew he had the legs. The Attic Brink was did remarkably well. They put Doat in the mind, and here he goes again. Brent Gross has made the break from the base of the scrum, and Dallas is quick, but they're not going to stop Brent Gross. Brent Gross all the way to the line for Warrington. Fantastic try from Brent Gross. Now, from the sublime to the ridiculous, we've trawled through a collection of gaffes and cock ups and have come up with some classics. We call this section Rattling the Skeletons because they're moments the players concerned would rather we left hidden away in the closet. So if you're squeamish, you better look away. Particularly if you're the poor bugger making the cock up. And the kick downfield is not Ooh, going to run dead. Gary kick. Hulse has to. Oh, he's it's dropped it! And it is a try here for Bradford. Right at the start of this match, and Aaron Smith is the man who's come up with it. What a mistake by Gary Hulse. Let me not remember, it was Warrington who actually dropped the ball from the very first scrum. Interesting, about 20 minutes before the kickoff, Paul Deacon was out there doing exactly that. Did everything right to the youngster Gary Hulse, apart from losing the football. Watch this, he's eager to get into the field of play, gets himself low, and the ball is dislodged as soon as it hits the ground. It's an easy one for the hooker, and it's all so easy for the conversion two by Paul Deacon. Last tackle here for Warrington. Good break from Forshaw, and they've completed a set of six. Paul Cullen will hoist the flag. Gleason, looping pass, Apo. Apo stabs it forward, Gross is after this, and he's got it as well, and he has the ball, oh, Lima! If he'd have taken that in, he'd have been over under the post, and he knows it. Well, wonderful approach play by the Wolves. Look at the long pass out there, missed out three players. Beautiful little kick through. He would have probably gone to the screen to see whether it was onside, but it didn't matter. Massive blow to Huddersfield tonight, losing Stanley Jean. They're already without the joint leading try scorer in Super League, Brandon Costin, for the rest of the year. Castleford not interested in that, though. That's a great kick by Healy. 
High kick here from Sykes. That really is hanging in the air. It's a test of this for Hunt. He has dropped it. It's come down and it's Dimmock. And this is a try. And the passing side was from Paul Sykes who hoisted the kick. And the referee is in no doubt that everyone was onside there. Hunt made an absolute meal of the high kick, but it hung and hung and hung. And that there was just too many for Hunt to cope with. What a great kick from Sykes. Certainly was. Well, he just kept hanging and hanging. And you could see that Alan Hunt was falling backwards. Not the best position there from the fullback. That's a gift for Dimmock. Look at this. Where is it? It's got snow on it. Disappears, disappears. He was in all sorts of trouble there. Great kick from Prius. He's gone for a 40-20. Sullivan has made sure he didn't get it. Well, he's right on his own try line. We're going to take... Oh, oh it's a try! What on earth is Oh, done? dearie me, Sivert underneath the post. I was just about to say we're going to take a huge risk and go down to Phil Clark before another try is scored. And Ian Sibbett and Ian Millwood, well, I would have a penny for his thoughts. What a night to come up with defensive blunders like this. Eight days away from the cup final, Anthony Sullivan could be playing himself out of the big event. And he knows it too. Why on earth he offloads? This is a sin when you've done so well to keep the ball in play in your own quarter. Safety first. What on earth is he doing that for? No chance for Stewart. Simmons said, I can't believe it. Neither could all the Warrington fans in there. He does ever so well. They obviously feel that Sullivan is a problem, that he can come up with the mistakes he has. But nobody in their right mind would have wanted to do a thing like that. That's the easiest try that Mr. Simmons will ever score. just crashed into each other that is an awful error and they have paid the big price you have to call on quick situations like that Chickle wanted it and it was just enough to put the fullback Redlinski in two minds they came up and the big fella said I'll have another easy try really takes it out of you. Here's Ripley again now. Oh, That's a try. And Demetrio has pinched it. And Demetrio scored a try. And Graham Stedman just puts his head in his hands. What a steal. Well, he gave away two high shots and two penalties, but he has repaid his 
coach Shane McNally with this. And Craig Hubey never really had control of that. that uh, sorry, uh, Ripley never really had control of the ball. And he got to it. Bang. See you later. Here is Robinson again. There's the dab to the in goal area. Oh, and well has lost it. And Ripley's come up with a try. He'll he's got this. to check whether he's onside, the Salford players, but Wellens has come up with a boo-boo, and Littler's come up with four if he was onside. Littler's with the dark hair. He's the one that uh, picks up the loose ball. This is DIY time. Well, who would think it? Who would think it from Paul Wellens? Fire from both outfits is the way that they've Long come back. The break. Oh, he's made the hard break. Little up. Oh, the Come pass on. was awful. It's a shocker. It was forward. No chance for anybody to get to it. Well, the man of the experience is Sean Long. Has made a real meal of this. Normally, he keeps cool. You know, defence is as vital in rugby league as attack. Winning tackles can be as crucial to a team performance as stunning tries. Dead right, Eddie. It's the try scorers who become the glamour boys of the game. But those who can perform in the muck and nettles department are every bit as important. So have a look at these death or glory try saving tackles and you'll know why these guys are the heroes. We've called them the rescuers, with Ironman Chris Rolinski leading the way with two crunching tackles. So Burrow will feed it again. Comes out to Jamie Jones Buchanan. He finds Kevin Sinfield, his captain, who in turn has found Walker. There's a huge hole opened up here for Walker. Radlinski, wonderful tackle. A certain try saving tackle by Radlinski. But for how long? Walderwood. Walker nearly slid over then, Eddie. Burrow flicks it back. Richard Mathers. They've lost 10 metres there in that tackle. But what a run from Walker. speculative kick well it uh, finds the ground and on the second bounce into the arms of Darren Albert now he's 10 meters away from his own line or through a poor challenge by Newton and Bybee and Darren Albert sees a gap he's only got Chris Radlinski to beat support there as well what a tackle from Radlinski poor defensive work here from Wigan okay the kick was good but you can see they're very slow to move up Albert gets the football he's looking for that half space Newton tries to go high. You can't afford to do that with this guy. He's got all the speed. But watch Redlinski coming across. Has he got him? Yo, oh, he's picked him up, put him straight in the bat. Well, the Saints they fans. want 100 leads, I'll tell you. Lower Titi has got McGuire with him. McGuire will get the fourth, will he? Great tackle, Darren Albert, and he's lost the ball. Well, that Great is tackle from Darren Albert, that was. Well, that is justice done because the pass, I felt, was forward to Maguire. Wonderful effort, Darren Albert. And to be fair to Albert, he's had a bit of a nightmare, but this pass from Lartici, to me, looks forward. It certainly was. But Darren Albert has been all at sea in the centre position. He has saved a certain try. And this is Roby, who finds Long, a little stab through by Long, allowed to progress with Vinnie Anderson, went behind Roby, but he managed to turn it into a decent pass, gets the ball away to Hooper, wide it goes to Gardner, oh. wonderful defence, Malcolm Alka. Unbelievable. They took the wrong option, perhaps, they had men on the inside, but take nothing away. Neat little grubber kick through by Sean Long. Did well to keep it alive. Good work by Gilmore. He's having a fine game. But look at that. This is Matu Tony. Now it's with Richard Horn. Paul Cook again. Wide it goes. This is Chris Chester. Very close. So close, Chester. That's the Saints try line. Great work from Scott Moore. Great defence. 
only got a hand to it. Here's Sid Domic. And Domic goes through the gap. And Domic has got support with him from Jeff, Jeffries, but he's not going to need him. Oh, yes, he is. That oh, is, yes, he is. He has pumped it. He had a man on the inside. I have never seen anything from an experienced player as bad as that. But how about the tackle from Gary Connolly? Oh, yeah, take nothing away from him. But this is not the time to start going for glory. Now for some earthquaking action. These are the bell ringing tackles that can be breathtaking, particularly if you're the man on the receiving end. And you took a first share of them, Steve, oh, didn't you? As the people will be able to see in your playing days at Dewsbury, Great Britain, and in Australia with Penrith. I'm sorry, Eddie, still ringing in the ears. Now, they've outlawed a lot of the really brutal stuff that was common when I was playing, but there are still plenty of shuddering tackles to keep spectators entertained and players in need of smelling salts. Surprise, surprise, we've called this section the Bell Ringers, and we start with Test Match Rugby League at its fiercest. I'd go early in the tackle count with a kick, try to confuse them. <laughs> Big hit there, and, and he lost, lost it. it to Fielden. He's taken some hammer, and he wants to make sure that he's okay. This is good refereeing. Drill the kick downfield. This time it bobbles a couple of times before it's picked up by Minicello. Minicello coming across field. Great hit by Connolly. What a wonderful chase by the hooker there, Danny Baduris. He Great really offload from Carney. Farrell will try and punch a hole oh. in the Petro Sivan receiver with the tackle on Andy Farrell. Oh, that shook the Great Britain captain up, I can assure you that. <laughs> and here come St Helens. Oh, Jerry, see you, see you, and Danny Sculthorpe. Take that. Mark Edmondson, just on the field. Biff, welcome to the derby. Oh, that's great stuff. OK, we've shown you some wonderful solo tries, and we now focus on those that are the result of brilliantly coordinated team efforts. Yes, the modern game of Super League is more and more about team play. Coming up are the great passing tries in which teamwork and individual skill is beautifully stitched together. Yeah, you know, we really had to rack our brains to come up with the title for this section, didn't we? <laughs> it took us a long time, but we got there in the end. Yet, yeah, after much head-scratching and deliberation, we've called this Great Team Tries. And we kick it off with a package of specials from the one and only Danny Maguire. <laughs> What a ball round the corner, it didn't reach the first man from Lauatiti, but it got to McKenna and Leeds playing with great confidence here. Already, we've only had five minutes, they lead 6-0, Maguire, bullet pass, it's Marcus Bly again, and he has Keith Senior on his inside, and Senior stands in the tackle, gives it to Maguire, oh, Leeds get a ten-point lead. Source of trouble at St. Helens on this right-hand side in defence. Kept his cool, but how cool was this from Celia? They do have danger all over the field, despite the fact that the likes of Long and Sculthorpe are not out there. And Mickey Hyam, I don't think anyone should underestimate the great loss that Mickey Hyam has been to this St. Helens side. But here comes Marcus Pye! And Marcus Pye has got Maguire! It's going to be a hat-trick for Maguire! It's going to be a hat-trick for Danny Maguire! Marcus by they hang off. You've got to make sure you go as a one unit in a straight line. And soon as Marcus by gave the standoff, he knew it was try number three, hat trick time for the number six. Just get to Ward. 
Diskin again, Sinfield. Kevin Brown was hunting the interception. Lawatiti just brushed him off. Got the ball away to McKenna. Here comes Chris McKenna. There's Danny Maguire again. A little jink inside. Maguire's off once more. This time the pass to Mathers. They have men on the overlap this way. Mathers to Senior. And Senior to Maguire again. Danny Maguire has that. But what about the big fella? Lawatiti. Hasn't had much opportunity, but when he offloaded, McKenna found it on the inside. Look at the step here. Got his balance. And what great play from Richie Mathers. He could have come straight down, it would have stopped. And then Senior just got to it. March again, here is Rooney. He's the engineer-in-chief, this fellow. Particularly with Ben Jeffries off the field and uh, not playing tonight. It's Dimitriou, the Wakefield captain. Fires a good ball to Obst, who comes back on the inside, Sam Obst. Gets the ball away as well, this is Halpen, it's dumped down to Wrench, good hands, brilliant hands, Rooney. And Rooney trying to go around the outside, pops the ball back inside, it bounces, and it's picked up again by March. This is brilliant play from Wakefield, Dimitriou, and Steve Snitch, and Snitch is over! Snitch is over for a magnificent Wakefield try! Roby and Vinnie Anderson, infield it goes, Mark Edmondson again. Shane McNally has to get the word out to his side that they've got to try to just stop this side, and it's, it's not easy. Not in this mode. Long bounces away from Dimitriou, gives it then to Roby, and Roby gets it away to Cunningham. It's fantastic to watch, isn't it? Vinny Anderson over the top, Darren Albert, they're in for another. It's easy. Well, they make it look easy, don't they? Look at that. Cunningham's back to his best, they're all back to their best. He's down to offloading. Danny has him. Absolutely, Danny Sculthorpe, a substitute in the cup final as well, when he and Paul became the first brothers to oppose each other in the final for 54 years. Look at that ball! Man again, isn't it? They're going too high, St. Talents. You've got to make sure that someone goes for the legs. Beautiful play from Talents. Sends Aspin Wall on right in front of the St. Talents fans. No cheering at that end. But look at the quality yet again. His brother went high. They all went high. And this man, well, with his praise on the fella Dennis Goldthorpe, Aspin Wall gleefully accepts the four. Surely this will be turned into six. Anyway, Leeds are in a position of strength here with Danny Ward. And behind him, Matt Diskin. Here now is Sinfield. It's with Maguire. Maguire gives it to McKenna. He bounces off Funati. Gets the ball wide. Marcus by for Leeds. What a start. Remember, St. Talents will have the advantage. The sun is in the eyes of this Leeds outfit. But watch the pass here from Senior. McKenna Senior. Six-nil leads, but Bradford looking to respond with Peacock. Dumps it into the arms of Aaron Smith. Well, if ever there's a night that Robbie Paul, the Bradford skipper, really has to come to the fore, it's this evening. He really has got to get his side moving. And here is Robbie Paul. That's a good ball wide. And Shantane Harvey flicks it into Vainacolo. That's a fantastic Bradford try. That was absolutely spectacular! We've seen so many skills already this season, and none better than this. One dummy, two dummy, pull the centre in fire, then you step, and the support and the pass. Boy, we're in for a cracker. He loves nothing better, does he? Here is Fozard. There's the offload, and another one, oh, and it's stuck for Wilkin. And Wilkin has got Radlinski, and he's lost Radlinski, finds Roby. And Roby dumps it down to Long, it goes over the top to Vinnie Anderson. Two on one here, brilliant pass. What, what a pass, pass from Vinnie Anderson to Jamie Lyon. And what a breathtaking game as well, good work from Fozard 
Offloads here. Roby just keeps his cool. Looking as though he was going to kick, but they kept it alive. Good work there from the standoff. What about the pass? We talk about Lauatiti holding the football with just one hand. Beautiful, beautiful running here. But what's the final pass? Absolutely superb. I could watch this time and time again. Come back on the inside. Dave, Dave Violek just took the dummy. He's having a great season. They're back. Steve, other producers have asked us to come up with our top 10 Super League players over the past 10 years of the competition. Oh, pretty difficult, that one, Eddie. That's like asking me to name the top 10 beautiful women in the world. How's that, then? Well, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. I mean, look, what's poetry in motion for me might not rhyme with someone else. OK, with that in mind, you and I agreed on a top 10 before we got together for this special show. And so, for argument's sake, Shall we share our selections with the viewers? OK, but let's start with number 10. What, like Miss World in reverse order? <laughs> <laughs> number 10 is Keith Senior. Great selection. Very solid. One of the very few players to have actually played in the full length of Super League since its inception. Yeah, he was a substitute in the Sheffield side that played in Paris on that opening night, that famous opening night all those years ago. But he's developed at Leeds, hasn't he? Oh, without a doubt. I think his strength has come through a lot more fitter than they were at the start of the Super League because they've gone full-time professional. And I think that uh, his combination with Marcus Bai definitely counts for him pulling in the top ten. Number nine, we've gone for Robbie Paul. He used to be the Bradford Bulls captain. Not anymore. Yeah, a bit difficult, but he is another one that's been around quite a long time in Super League. And uh, I think in the early part, he was an explosive player. OK, he may have lost a little bit of edge as uh, age is creeping up on him. And I think maybe injuries has taken its toll. But I still think his individual brilliance makes him a candidate to be put in the top. And he actually scored a hat-trick in the 1996 Challenge Cup final, didn't he? He certainly did, and was on the losing side. It's a funny old game. It is a funny old game. Number eight, we've gone for a relative newcomer, I suppose some people will say, the Leeds captain, Kevin Sinfield. Yeah, well, we argued about this. I thought perhaps he should be higher up in the level. But he's made it to the top ten, and deservedly so. OK, he's had his wobbles. Remember, he should have taken the kick, which maybe would have taken him to extra time when he was at Cardiff, when Leeds were playing Bradford. The Bulls won on that occasion, and, well, he took a lot of stick. But he's battled down. He's really shown his authority, and I think he's one of the greatest players that we have playing now. He didn't play in the Tri-Nations in 2004. He was given the full winter off. Do you think that's made him a better player? Without a doubt. And I think that, uh, you know, the way that the press and the fans have got on his back and the way that he's carried it, he deserved a top billing. OK, number seven, St Helens captain, Chris Joint. A worker. Simple as that. You can have all the stars, and we mostly have picked people who have got this wonderful individual brilliance, something that can turn a game. But this was a man that just kept going. Mr. Perpetual Motion, just kept at it for the full 80 minutes. Absolute wonder. He, he, when it came to being a captain, he led by example. Doesn't say much on the field of play. He didn't have to. He just knuckled down and got on with his job. Yeah, he isn't a man who says much, but what he does say, people listen to, obviously. And he was big in attack and defence. Oh, without a doubt. And that's the reason why he was given the honour of leading a very, very good side. St. Helens had a lot of top quality players there, but they stuck by him. The coaches have always said, here is a man that is steady as a rock. Now, for number six, we go to Wigan. And people might be wondering why we've gone Leeds, Bradford, St. Helens and Wigan in the main for this. But they, in fairness, are the four clubs that have dominated the Super League since it started in 1996. And the reason why we've got these top players is for one reason only. They are quality people. And you need a quality star to make a very good team. I know a lot of people say that one man does not make the team, but when you look through this list, those men would play anywhere for any team in any country at international level. Number six is Chris Radlinski. Yeah, solid. Get the ball in the air, he's not going to miss it. His positional play is quite superb, but the one thing that I have really feel that has developed over the years as he got older is his ability to read the game. 
He just knows when something's going to happen. Maybe if a little breakdown on the inside. He knows to skirt it. He's a good reader of the game. Great player. Steve Owen, this list, a lot of people will think that we don't know much about the game because of all the people we've left out. Hang on. <laughs> they may say it about you, but I've played. At least I know something about it. Well, that's open to debate. But mm. the people we've missed out are the likes of Bobby Goulding, the St. Helens captain, 96-97, at the start of Super League, did brilliantly. Steel Retchless, the London Broncos tackling machine. What was it, 60-odd tackles in one match? Unbelievably. But as chairman of the Hookers Union, you've got two number nines in the top ten. And at number five is Kieran Cunningham. I would have liked Kieran to be a little bit higher. But it's a fact that he's gone through so many seasons carrying an injury. He's back to his best now. And when he first started getting into it, there was no better runner from the dummy half position. He is without equal. The man can read it, and he has this wonderful ability to know if the tackle is a very slow to get into the first and second marker position. What does he do? He pinpoints them, runs at them deliberately, and the referee gives away the penalty. He's a thinker, and that's why he's in the top. And he can also plunder a try from dummy half with about two metres to go, can't he? Listen, with so much strength, very, very easy. Very difficult to stop. Surprise, surprise, another hooker comes in at number four. James Lowes, you've got a love affair with this fella since he hung up his boots. Well, he hates me to bits. I, mean, I suppose you can call it a love affair, but there's often a love-hate relationship through it. And he was a man that, well, he was fiery. And often, he was the man at Bradford that would just run around the back telling everybody, you know, lift again, lift again, do it this way, do it that way. He never stopped talking. Hookers never do. Hookers get on the nerves of referees all the time. But he knew... He had this wonderful way of just turning maybe the referee's thinking a little bit. And there were other times when the referee would do the thinking themselves, show him a red card and say, see you later. <laughs> but he was a great player. He, he sadly is no longer in the Super League. And Bradford, ever since he's finished playing, they have missed a proper hooker like Jimmy Lowe's. Yeah, they certainly have. And uh, I, I think a lot of people criticise me because I keep bringing it up. You've already brought it up now. But the man was quality. And he could produce things very, very close to the line. Could throw a dummy, could have the sidestep, could have someone coming back on the angle, could do a simple run around. Very, very, very much an old style hooker. There's not many of them left. Right, we're into the top three. I can hear the arguments all over the place now, the people we've missed out. But our number three is Sean Long, a match winner for St Helens. Without a doubt. I think you'd have to classify him as Mr. What is he going to do next? <laughs> and half the time, I get the impression that he has got no idea what he's going to do next. And that's the reason why he is that match winner, because he can pick out something different. Maybe a little chip over the top, maybe a long-range kick, throw the dummy, sidestep. He's got it all. They can keep him under control, the defences can keep him quiet for so long. And then he has that ability to just come up with something completely unique. Indeed, and he also has got a lot of speed. Yeah, I think that... Uh, his ability to be able to run on the arc is the reason why he can fool a lot of defences. A lot of people criticise him because he runs across the face of the defence, but he's also been used as a ploy because they think he's going to step and go back on the inside. And when he does that, he can offload. And the way that St. Helens always have someone supporting, he's made so many openings that has created so many breaks for the Saints. OK, number two is the St Helens captain, Paul Sculthorpe. Got to be one of the greats in Super League. He won the Man of Steel, which is the player of the year, two years running. That has never been done before. No, it's a great honour, and I think that uh, he fully deserves to be up in the second position. And in many ways, it was a very close-run thing that he didn't finish on top of the tree. He's a quality player. Another man that can lead by example, not surprisingly, was given the job when Chris Joint retired. The ideal person, also being honoured this particular year with the fact that he'll be the new Great Britain captain, is a quality player. He knows when to dig deep. He knows to be able to just rally the troops. He can give the impression that he's lazy, but he's got deceptive speed. He can throw the dummy, step off one foot, and when he gets through there, people think that he's only sort of like waltzing along but he's not he's getting very quick strides away and then when he makes the half break and this I think is probably one of the, the reasons why he's up with the tops with the greats is that his ability to then do the half break and look and support quality 
from one Great Britain captain to another who is the number one, as far as we are concerned, in the top ten of Super League, and that's Andy Farrell. Sadly, no longer in the Super League competition, but boy, he made an impression, didn't he? He certainly did, and I think from a very, very young age, I think at 17 years of age, he was uh, pinpointed as going to be an international, pinpointed as being an international captain, and he's certainly brought that to fruition. He's a very, very great player, and then take a couple of seasons ago, Wigan had so many problems in the pack, so what does he do? He takes the responsibility of carting the ball forward and going up into the prop position. That's very difficult for a man who, for the most of his career, has played outside either the loose forward position or the second row, and so many times at standoff. Versatile is a word that bring comes to mind. Another word that comes to mind when you mention Andy Farrell is bravery. Remember the time when he came out with his face all bandaged, a broken nose, he still played on, and he won the match against Leeds? Yeah, I think you've got to start looking towards his character after that game. He didn't want any fuss. You know, people were saying, oh, how brave it is. But he realises deep down, Super League is a very, very tough game. Broken noses, cuts, bruises, broken ribs, bones, it's part of our wonderful, wonderful history and part of our game. He didn't want any fuss about it, he just said, let's get on with it. I am there to do a job. And I think that characterises the bloke in as much where he says to everyone, I don't mind doing the dirty work. I have the ability to pull out the quality, and he has. His goal kicking is superb, but when he has to dig deep and you need a leader, there was none better. Top 10, could have been top 100. Could have been top 3,000 the way that you were taking time over it. The Challenge Cup is a national treasure that will always have a special place in history and in our hearts. Especially those finals that were played at the old Wembley Stadium. They weren't just rugby league matches, they were occasions. And so, for this next section, we've sorted out some of our favourite moments from Challenge Cup finals. Yes, and we start with this classic scored by Tom Van Vollenhoven in the good old days of black and white television. They were the days when you were a player. But this clip even predates Steve-O, but it is still regarded as one of the greatest Challenge Cup tries they've ever seen. They say that they're quick in Super League. How about the speed on show here from the South African winger Tom Van Vollenhoven? Still a legend in the town of St Helens, a quite brilliant try. So witness deep inside their own half of the field. It's with Stuart Wright, and Wright will attack them. And a little chip over the top. Now it's a question of whether Wright can win the race with these defenders. Wright to the ball, and he gets down. Great try from Stuart Wright. Line. Ball goes to ground and it's Joe Lydon. Lydon swoops on it. He evades one tackler. He sees the line at the other end of the field. Across comes David Stevenson. Lydon skips out of the tackle and Lydon will go over. That's one of the great long range Wembley tries. Joe Lydon for Widness. Lydon, the Wigan born player. He has the Widness supporters on their feet. They're ecstatic. So too the players. Andy Gregory joining in the celebrations. What a try from Joe Lydon. And it all came about from an almighty error by the Wigan attack. Look at that, Stevens trying to offload, not a knock on. Leiden very, very quick. Watch how he switches the ball so he can fend with the right. But this is the most important factor. He has his eyes on the corner. He does not look on the inside. He knows he has the pace. What a try. <laughs> Gregory and he gets the ball inside to Joe Lydon. Little dummy from Lydon. Now then, Lydon, remember the tries he scored to win the Lance Todd for Wigan. Is this going to be another? He has support with him on his inside. It's Ellery Hanley. And Hanley crabbing across in front of the sticks. Must be a try. Hanley will score for Wigan. Oh, and Edie on top of him. That will have hurt him. But Hanley has scored the try for Wigan in the Challenge Cup final. Look what it means to the Wigan supporters. It all came about from poor defence by Halifax. There's the try scorer, Ellery Hanley. Great support, but it came about from the skills from this man, Leiden. 
Look how he put the step in. Then he runs on the arc. And notice the support back on the inside. He had the choice of four Wigan players, but it was the captain, Ellery Hanley. What a try! Fascinating final so far. Wigan looking for something here. Lamb to O'Neill. O'Neill on the break. He's got Paul Johnson in support. Johnson looks on his inside. And Gary Connolly is there. And Connolly goes over for the try for Wigan. Stuart Raper, the coach, off his seat. Stuart coming to the referee, pointing to the spot. And Gary Connolly. How ironic's this? St Helens born, now playing for Wigan. Try in the final. It all came about by poor defence. Kieran Cunningham was caught out of position. Stuart Raper will be happy with this. Watch how Cunningham commits himself. Julian O'Neill throws a dummy. Should have gone low, didn't. Johnson, great support. Watch how the way that O'Connelly comes back on the inside. He read that absolutely superb. Wonderful. He was seen from a different angle. Lamb, watch the attempted tackle. Through the dummy, New Love couldn't do anything about it, but watch Connolly coming back on the inside. Boy, he read it superbly. This 1985 final between Wigan and Hull will go down as one of the great finals. That's a great ball from Kenny, and he finds David Stevenson, and Stevenson has got Henderson Gill outside him. Henderson Gill all the way down the line. Here comes Gary Kemble, and the Kiwi has missed him. And Henderson Gill over for the try. Oh, how about the cheeky grin? Henderson Gill with the try for Wigan. It all came about by poor defence from Hull. They came off the wing. Look at that. There's three on one. Beautiful pass from Kenny to Stevenson. And Henderson Gill set sail for the line. Kemble can't do anything about that. He knows he has the pace and the power. What an effort. On the attack, looking for something special from Robbie Paul. And perhaps Robbie Paul can produce it again. Wonderful change of direction. Great step. And that is the first ever hat-trick scored by anyone in history in a Wembley Challenge Cup final. Robbie Paul. Beautiful quick play the ball. You can see the one and two markers. They were caught napping. And look at the speed and the style. What a step. Superb hat-trick. There you see the markers well and truly out of the way. Watch how he just off the balance, off the right, and then goes on the arc. They expected him to step again. He stayed in a straight line right underneath the sticks. Oh, then trying to cut down this big deficit. They have the runners here. It's Lulawai. He's broken the first tackle. He's gone round Sean Edwards. Mike Ford in hot pursuit. But James Lulawai with the pace and scores the try. Beautiful offload. Watch how he goes through the gap. Pulls in the defence. Bang! Look how he steps now. What wonderful balance. Pulls away. Ford hasn't got the pace. He knows he's there. The Kiwi has put Hull well and truly back in this game. So Wigan underneath their own post. The ball with Martin of Fire. And of Fire saw the gap. Neil Harmon couldn't get to him. Was left clutching its straws. It's Martin of Fire now. He's only got Alan Tate to beat. He goes on the arc around Alan Tate. And Martin of Fire gets over for a wonderful length of the field try for Wigan. Wonderful work from the winger. He comes from the blind side on the arc. He can see that the defence is very poor. Harmon, no effort there at all. Should have gone low, but watch the ability here. Comes back midfield, knows he's got Tate on the rack, pulls out towards the corner. That is classic. And now for something completely different. This is a sequence we put together strictly Laughs. And watch out in particular for Steve-O here playing a bit part when he literally gets the bird. It could have led to me being ostracised. <laughs> and it guarantees a good laugh for you, but not for me. But we start with the case of the disappearing tri-scorer. <laughs> Into Super League in 2006, here's the Warrington French connection. Jerome Guisset with Bill. Jerome, 16 nil up against Wigan. That's... Uh, as much as Warrington could have hoped for, surely. What a break from Nathan Wood. He's got Gaskell. Oh, he's taken it himself. Gaskell was on the outside, but Nathan Wood comes up with his second try of the night. And he's left the building, Nathan Wood. To 
disappear down the tunnel. Where's the try scorer? The try is given. He's back. He's back on the other side. He went down one tunnel, ran right round, and came back up the other tunnel. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we saw Lee Breer score the try, jump over, and then right sit in the stand. And I think you'll find that the official Come Steve Ganson is not too impressed with it okay. either. Listen, I know you're excited, but you can't go through the crowd. All right. He's right. He's spot on, is Steve Ganson. Not only did he go through the crowd, he went through the Wigan crowd. If he'd have gone at that end, there wouldn't have been a problem. Just but the four was at the other way. end that is populated by the Wigan supporters. He went down one tunnel, ran 40 yards and came back the other side. The try, though, is vital for Warrington. But what a dummy. We mentioned before the game that Gary Connolly, we thought, would bring a lot of experience. But I must say, they've been catching out the two centres, has been Wall and Connolly, time and time again. This man has had his eyes on the TikTok ever since the kickoff. Off it goes. The official is right. We can do without that. Be excited by all means. And you'd have to feel excited. You'd have to feel thrilled when you've thrown two marvellous dummies against two of the greats of rugby league. You know, I'm sorry, Steve-O, but that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. But, you know, the tagline is that I was quite concerned and I thought we ought to really get a tetanus jab. So we went to the keeper, and what did he say? Well, the zookeeper just said, I'm sorry, I didn't know which <laughs> ostrich it was. <laughs> you know, we're going to finish this programme with one of the most remarkable ends to any game, anywhere, anytime. Now, let's set the scene. The match finishing siren is due and St. Helens are trailing the Bulls in this 2000 Super League qualifying playoff. They need a try to win it. So, the second the next tackle is made or the ball goes dead, the game's over and Bradford will have won this vital match. All the Bulls have to do is get the ball or the man. Meanwhile, Saints have to keep the ball alive and try to get over the line at the other end of the field. So there you are, you've got the setting now for one of the most fantastic finishes you'll ever see. He's given a penalty. Oh, he has. He called hell there. They're still not out of it. Oh, they're taking the short one. They know that they've only got 10 seconds. Will they get this play of the ball in? They're holding him down. Scott Thorpe wants to get on with it. Bradford counting down. Kick this and is, chase now. This is the last play. Long kicks it wide to Iro. Iro to Hall. Hall is trapped. Back it goes to Hoppy. Over the shoulder to Hall. There is Yonkers, here is Long, and Long fancies it, Long fancies it, it's wide to West, it's wide to West, Dwayne West, inside to Joint, 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 oh, oh, oh fantastic, they've won it, they've won it, see the game like that. That. they've won it, Chris that, Joint, Chris Joint has won it. Unbelievable! 
Chris Joint has won the match for St. Helens. What a final passage of play. St. Bernard's on now. What a run. What a try. What a match. What drama. Talking of drama. Two passes. The kick out wide. Then three passes. Then it's four. Never say die. Then it's five. Then it's six. Seven. Then it's eight. Oh, didn't he do well, West? Back on the inside. Nine. He didn't want to get double figures, but he's going to get four points. I've never seen a try like that. The clock was up. There was only two seconds remaining. Smith gave the penalty. He was the silly push in the touch that gave Saints the lifeline. Whoa! The man is absolutely devastated. Why wouldn't you be? They have got out of jail. No key. No bomb. Just sheer, utter determination. What a captain's knock, talking about leading by example. Oh. He said, who cares? It's all over, he knows it. This huge crowd know it. But what disappointment. But full credit, Eddie, we mentioned the fact that Saints can dig deep. That was a huge hole. I'm still pinching myself. Long to add the extras. That's the icing. Chris Joint's try, converted by Sean Long. Saints have won it 16-11. The most remarkable match that you have ever seen. And in Super League 5, we've seen some outstanding games. But none with the drama that we had here tonight. Absolutely breathtaking, and nobody, nobody who was in this ground tonight or watching at home on television will ever forget the drama of that last minute. There have been some wonderful moments, Steve-O, in the opening five years of Super League, but few can have matched what we've just witnessed. That was one of the most dramatic endings to a game. I have ever seen in my life. Perhaps we look back on just over 12 months ago when, remember when Melbourne, in the dying seconds, they picked up the grand final win over St. George. But this is equally as dramatic. The never say die attitude. They just would not give in. Bradford stood around, let them just keep the ball alive. Sensational stuff here. Wow. Fantastic. And we've only just got our voices back. Now you know why we reckon rugby league is the greatest game in the world, bar none. See you at the ball game. The super ball game. Steve, other producers have asked us to come up with our top 10 Super League players over the past 10 years of the competition. Whew, pretty difficult, that one, Eddie. That's like asking me to name the top 10 beautiful women in the world. How's that, then? Well, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. I mean, look, what's poetry in motion for me might not rhyme with someone else. 
OK, with that in mind, you and I agreed on a top ten before we got together for this special show. And so, for argument's sake, shall we share our selections with the viewers? OK, but let's start with number ten. What, like Miss World in reverse order? <laughs> <laughs> number ten is Keith Senior. Great selection. Very solid. One of the very few players to have actually played in the full length of Super League since its inception. Yeah, he was a substitute in the Sheffield side that played in Paris on that opening night, that famous opening night all those years ago. But he's developed at Leeds, hasn't he? Oh, without a doubt. I think his strength has come through. A lot more fitter than they were at the start of the Super League because they've gone full-time professional. And I think that uh, his combination with Marcus Bai definitely accounts for him pulling in the top ten. Number nine, we've gone for Robbie Paul. He used to be the Bradford Bulls captain, not anymore. Yeah, a bit difficult, but he is another one that's been around quite a long time in Super League. And uh, I think in the early part, he was an explosive player. OK, he may have lost a little bit of edge as uh, age is creeping up on him. And I think maybe injuries have taken its toll. But I still think his individual brilliance makes him a candidate to be put in the top. And he actually scored a hat-trick in the 1996 Challenge Cup final, didn't he? He certainly did, and was on the losing side. It's a funny old game. It is a funny old game. Number eight, we've gone for a relative newcomer, I suppose some people will say, the Leeds captain, Kevin Sinfield. Yeah, well, we argued about this. I thought perhaps he should be higher up in the level. But he's made it to the top ten, and deservedly so. OK, he's had his wobbles. Remember, he should have taken the kick, which maybe would have taken him to extra time when he was at Cardiff when Leeds were playing Bradford, the Bulls won on that occasion, and, well, it took a lot of stick, but he's battled down, he's really shown his authority, and I think he's one of the greatest players that we have playing now. He didn't play in the Tri-Nations in 2004, he was given the full winter off. Do you think that's made him a better player? Without a doubt. And I think that, uh, you know, the way that the press and the fans have got on his back, and the way that he's carried it, he deserves a top billing. OK, number seven, St Helens captain, Chris Joint. A worker. Simple as that. You can have all the stars, and we mostly have picked people who have got this wonderful individual brilliance. Something that can turn a game. But this was a man that just kept going. Mr. Perpetual Motion. Just kept at it. Back to the best. He's <laughs> down to offload it. Danny has him. Absolutely. Danny Scothorpe, a substitute in the cup final as well when he and Paul became the first brothers to oppose each other in the final for 54 years. Look at that ball! And here comes Aspinwall for Wigan! It's the second Wigan try in as many minutes. It's the man again, isn't it? They're going too high, St. Talents. You've got to make sure that someone goes for the legs. Beautiful play from Talents. Sends Aspinwall on, right in front of the St. Talents fans. No cheering at that end. But look at the quality yet again. His brother went high. They all went high. And this man, well, with his praise on the fella, Dennis Goldthorpe, Aspinwall gleefully accepts the four. Surely this will be turned into six. Anyway, Leeds are in a position of strength here with Danny Ward. And behind him, Matt Diskin. Here now is Sinfield. It's with Maguire. Maguire gives it to McKenna. He bounces off Funati. Gets the ball wide. Marcus Bay for Leeds. What a start. Remember, St. Helens will have the advantage. The sun is in the eyes of this Leeds outfit. But watch the pass here from Senior. McKenna Senior. Six nil leads, but Bradford looking to respond with Peacock. Dumps it into the arms of Aaron Smith. Well, if ever there's a night that Robbie Paul, the Bradford skipper, really has to come to the fore, it's this evening. He really has got to get his side moving. And here is Robbie Paul. That's a good ball wide. And Shantain Harvey flicks it into Vainakolo. That's a fantastic Bradford try. That was absolutely spectacular. We've seen so many skills already this season, and none better than this. One dummy, two dummy, pull the center in fire, then you step, and the support and the pass. Boy, we're in for a cracker. He loves nothing better, does he? Here is Fozard. There's the offload, and another one. Oh, and it's stuck. 
for Wilkin. And Wilkin has got Radlinski and he's lost Radlinski. He finds Roby. And Roby dumps it down to Long. It goes over the top to Vinnie Anderson. Two on one here. Brilliant pass. What a pass from Vinnie Anderson to Jamie Ryan. And what a breathtaking game as well. Good work from Fozard. Offloads here. Roby just keeps his cool. Looking as though he was going to kick. But they kept it alive. Who would think it from Paul Wellens? Fire from both outfits is the way that they've Long come back. On the oh, break. he's made the hard break. A little half. Oh, oh, the pass off. was awful. It's a shocker. It was forward. No chance for anybody to get to it. Well, the man of the experience is Sean Long. Has made a real meal of this. Normally he keeps cool. You know, defence is as vital in rugby league as attack. Winning tackles can be as crucial to a team performance as stunning tries. Dead right, Eddie. It's the try scorers who become the glamour boys of the game. But those who can perform in the muck and nettles department are every bit as important. So have a look at these death or glory try-saving tackles and you'll know why these guys are the heroes. We've called them the rescuers with Ironman Chris Relinsky leading the way with two crunching tackles. So Burrow will feed it again. Comes out to Jamie Jones Buchanan. He finds Kevin Sinfield, his captain, who in turn has found Walker. There's a huge hole opened up here for Walker. Radlinski, wonderful tackle. A certain try-saving tackle by Radlinski. But for how long? Walderwood. Walker nearly slid over then, Eddie. Burrow flicks it back, Richard Mathers. They've lost 10 metres there in that tackle. But what a run from Walker. The so last tackle here for Wigan, and uh, on halfway, a speculative kick. Well, it uh, finds the ground and on the second bounce into the arms of Dallin Albert. Now he's 10 metres away from his own line. Or oh, through a poor challenge by Newton and Bybee. And Dallin Albert sees a gap. He's only got Chris Radlinski to beat support there as well. What a tackle from Radlinski. Poor defensive work here from Wigan. OK, the kick was good, but you can see they're very slow to move up. Albert gets the football, he's looking for that half space. Newton tries to go high. You can't afford to do that with this guy. He's got all the speed. But watch Redlinski coming across. Has he got him? Yo, oh, he's picked him up, put him straight in the bath. Well, the same They want 100 leads, I'll tell you. Lower Titi has got McGuire with him. McGuire. Well, that Great is tackle from Darren Albert, that was. Well, that is justice done because the pass, I felt, was forward to Maguire. Wonderful effort, Darren Albert. And to be fair to Albert, he's had a bit of a nightmare. He ran right round and came back up the other tunnel. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we saw Lee Breer score the try, jump over and then right sit in the stand. And I think you'll find that the official Steve Ganton He's not too impressed with it okay. either. Listen, I know you're excited, but you can't go through the crowd. All right. He's right. He's spot on, is Steve Ganson. Not only did he go through the crowd, he went through the Wigan crowd. If he'd have gone at that end, there wouldn't have been a problem. Just but the score was the at the water. other end that is populated by the Wigan supporters. He went down one tunnel, ran 40 yards and came back the other side. The try, though, is vital for Warrington. But what a dummy. We mentioned before the game that Gary Connolly, we thought, would bring a lot of experience. But I must say, they've been catching out the two centres, has been Wall and Connolly, time and time again. This man has had his eyes on the TikTok ever since the kickoff. Off he goes. The official is right. We can do without that. Be excited by all means. And you'd have to feel excited, you'd have to feel thrilled when you've thrown two marvellous dummies against two of the greats of rugby league.
I'm sorry, Steve-O, but that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. But, you know, the tagline is that I was quite concerned and I thought we ought to really get a tetanus jab. So we went to the keeper, and what did he say? Well, the zookeeper just said... Oh, it's, Wigan. it's the second Wigan try in as many minutes. It's the man again, isn't it? They're going too high, St. Talent. You've got to make sure that someone goes for the legs. Beautiful play from Dallas. St. Aspen wall on. Right in front of the St. Helens fans. No cheering at that end. But look at the quality yet again. His brother went high. They all went high. And this man, well, with heat praise on the fella, Dennis Goldthorpe. Aspen Wall gleefully accepts the four. Surely this will be turned into six. Anyway, Leeds are in a position of strength here with Danny Ward. And behind him, Matt Diskin. Here now is Sinfield. It's with Maguire. Maguire gives it to McKenna. He bounces off Funati. Gets the ball wide. Marcus by for Leeds. What a start. Remember, St. Helens will have the advantage. The sun is in the eyes of this Leeds outfit. But watch the pass here from Senior. McKenna Senior. Six nil Leeds, but Bradford looking to respond with Peacock. Dumps it into the arms of Aaron Smith. Well, if ever there's a night that Robbie Paul, the Bradford skipper, really has to come to the fore, it's this evening. He really has got to get his side moving. And here is Robbie Paul. That's a good ball wide. And Shantan Harvey flicks it into Vainakolo. That's a fantastic Bradford try. That was absolutely spectacular. We've seen so many skills already this season, and none better than this. One dummy, two dummy, pull the centre in fire, then you step, and the support and the pass. Boy, we're in for a cracker. He loves nothing better, does he? Here is Fozard. There's the offload, and another one. Oh, and it's stuck for Wilkin. And Wilkin has got Radlinski, and he's lost Radlinski, he finds Roby. And Roby dumps it down to Long, it goes over the top to Vinny Anderson. Two on one here, brilliant pass. What, what a pass from Vinny Anderson to Jamie Ryan. And what a breathtaking game as well, good work from Fozard. Offloads here. Roby just keeps his cool, looking as though he was going to kick, but they kept it alive. Good work there from the standoff. What about the pass? We talk about Lauatiti holding the football with just one hand. Beautiful, beautiful running here. But what's the final pass? Absolutely superb. Well, the 10 metres could be vital. He really should have had a look to see whether Sean Long had given up, which he knows he has, and he just tumbles. I'm taking nothing away from the youngster scoring a vital try. It was a good effort, but you'll see acres of space. Now then, he could have made this kick a damn sight easier for Henry Paul. He could have come in at least five or six metres. He just lost it there just slightly. Off to Tony, to Richard Horn. Quick hands up. It had to come, all that pressure. 
pressure in the first half, all that defence, a long-range effort would have to come about. The error, they were under a lot of pressure, and Jamie Lyon gleefully accepts it. Wonderful rhythm, nice style, he knew he had the legs. Eddie, I think Greg Gross did remarkably well, they put Doach in the mind, and here he goes again. Greg Gross has made the break from the base of the scrum, and Dallas is quick, but they're not going to stop Brent Gross. Brent Gross all the way to the line for Warrington. Fantastic try from Brent Gross. Now, from the sublime to the ridiculous, we've trawled through a collection of gaffes and cock-ups and have come up with some classics. We call this section Rattling the Skeletons because they're moments the players concerned would rather we left hidden away in the closet. So if you're squeamish, you better look away. Particularly if you're the poor bugger making the cock up. And the kick downfield is not Ooh, going to run dead. Right. Gary Hulse has to. Oh, he's dropped it. it. And it is a try here for Bradford. Right at the start of this match, and Aaron Smith is the man who's come up with it. What a mistake by Gary Hulse. I may not remember, it was Warrington who actually dropped the ball from the very first scrum. Interesting, about 20 minutes before the kickoff, Paul Deacon was out there doing exactly that. Did everything right with the youngster Gary Hulse, apart from losing the football. Watch this, he's eager to get into the field of play, gets himself low, and the ball is dislodged as soon as it hits the ground. It's an easy one for the hooker, and it's all so easy for the... Devastated! Why wouldn't you be? They have got out of jail! No key! No bomb! Just sheer, utter determination! What a captain's knock! Talking about leading by example! Oh. He said, who cares? It's all over, he knows it. This huge crowd know it. But what disappointment. But full credit, Eddie, we mentioned the fact that Saints can dig deep. That was a huge hole. I'm still pinching myself. Long to add the extras. That's the icing. Chris Joint's try, converted by Sean Long. Saints have won it 16-11. The most remarkable match that you have ever seen. And in Super League 5, we've seen some outstanding games. But none with the drama that we had here tonight. Absolutely breathtaking, and nobody Nobody who was in this ground tonight or watching at home on television will ever forget the drama of that last minute. There have been some wonderful moments, Steve-O, in the opening five years of Super League, but few can have matched what we've just witnessed. That was one of the most dramatic endings to a game I have ever seen in my life. Perhaps we look back on just over 12 months ago when remember when melbourne in the dying seconds they picked up the grand final win over st george but this is equally as dramatic the never say die attitude they just would not give in bradford stood around let them just keep the ball alive sensational stuff here wow Fantastic, and we've only just got our voices back. Now you know why we reckon rugby league is the greatest game in the world, bar none. See you at the ball game, the super ball game.
try that Mr. Simmons will ever score. Well, he's a great player. And he Brilliant. is Simmons has been no This is the test of well. Sullivan. He's dropped it. This well, is time. try time. Pick anyone from three. Coy Love, I think, will take it. Yeah. Well, the referee has handed well, it on to the video referee to check the kick. onside, offside. Well, just check the ground, please. Stabbed to the in-goal. Oh, lost. That's and a picked try. up by Lauatiti. That's a try. He'll give it. He has. Lauatiti's strength. He didn't decide to refer that one to the video referee. And Richard Silverwood gives Lauatiti the four-pointer. That ball came free. That meant it was play on. And Lauatiti just picked it up and plonked it down. It was a good kick from Dunaman, caused all sorts of confusion. You get it, no, I'll get it. Tickle and the fullback Radlinski just crashed into each other. That is an awful error. And they have paid the big price. You have to call on quick situations like that. Tickle wanted it, and it was just enough to put the fullback Radlinski in two minds. They came up, and the big fella said, I'll have another easy try. Defeated all the time. It really takes it out of you. Here's Ripley again now. Oh, he's That's lost a try. It. And Demetrio has pinched it. And Demetrio has scored a try. And Graham Stedman just puts his head in his hands. What a steal. Well, he gave away two high shots and two penalties, but he has repaid his coach Shane McNally with this. And Craig Huby never really had control of that. that uh, sorry, uh, Ripley never really had control of the ball. And he got to it. Bang. See you later. Here is Robinson again. There's the dab to the in goal area. Oh, and Wellens has lost it, and Ripley's come up with a try. He'll he's got to check whether he's onside, the Salford players, but Wellens has come up with a boo-boo, and Littler's come up with four if he was onside. Littler's with the dark hair. He's the one that uh, picks up the loose ball. This is coming across. Has he got him? Yo, oh, he's picked him up, put him straight in the bat. Well, the Saints they fans. want 100 leads, I'll tell you. Lower Titi has got Maguire with him. Maguire will get the fourth, will he? Great tackle, Darren Albert, and he's lost the ball. Well, that Great is just... tackle from Darren Albert, that was. Well, that is justice done because the pass, I felt, was forward to Maguire. Wonderful effort, Darren Albert. And to be fair to Albert, he's had a bit of a nightmare, but this pass from La Titi to me looks forward, it certainly was. But Darren Albert has been all at sea in the centre position, he has saved a certain try. And this is Roby, who finds Long, a little stab through by Long, allowed to progress with Vinnie Anderson, went behind Roby, but he managed to turn it into a decent pass, gets the ball away to Hooper, wide it goes to Gardner, oh. wonderful defence. Unbelievable. They took the wrong option, perhaps. They had men on the inside, but take nothing away. Neat little grubber kick through by Sean Long. Did well to keep it alive. Good work by Gilmore. He's having a fine game. But look at that. This is Matu Tony. Now it's with Richard Horn. Paul Cook again. Wide it goes. This is Chris Chester. Very close. So close, Chester. That's the same try line. Great work from Scott Moore. Great defence. Certainly got a hand to it. Here's Sid Domic. And Domic goes through the gap. And Domic has got support with him from Jeff Jeffries, but he's not going to need him. Oh, yes, he is. That oh, is yes, he is. He has bombed it. He had a man on the inside. I have never 
never seen anything from an experienced player as bad as that. But how about the tackle from Gary Connolly? Oh, yeah, take nothing away from him. But this is not the time to start going for glory. And now for some earthquake in action. These are the bell ringing tackles that can be breathtaking, particularly if you're the man on the receiving end. And you took a first share of them, Steve, oh, didn't you? As the people will be able to see in your playing days at Dewsbury, Great Britain, and in Australia with Penrith. I'm sorry, Eddie, still ringing in the ears. Now, they've outlawed a lot of the really brutal stuff that was common when I was playing, but there are still plenty of shuddering tackles to keep spectators entertained and players in need of smelling salts. Surprise, surprise, we've called this section the Bell Ringers, and we start with Test Match Rugby League at its fiercest. Frears has gone for a 40-20. Sullivan has made sure he didn't get it. Well, he's right on his own try line. We're going to take... Oh, oh it's a try! What on earth is Oh, done? dearie me, Sivert underneath the post. I was just about to say we're going to take a huge risk and go down to Phil Clark before another try is scored. And Ian Sivert and Ian Millwood... Well, I would have a penny for his thoughts. What a night to come up with defensive blunders like this. Eight days away from the cup final. Anthony Sullivan could be playing himself out of the big event. And he knows it too. Why on earth he offloads? This is a sin when you've done so well to keep the ball in play in your own quarter. Safety first. What on earth is he doing that for? No chance for Stewart. Sibbert said, I can't believe it. Neither could all the Warrington fans in there. He does ever so well. They obviously feel that Sullivan is a problem, that he can come up with the mistakes he has. But nobody in their right mind would have wanted to do a thing like that. That's the easiest try that Mr. Sibbert will ever score. That is a great player. And he is Sibbert the test for well. Sullivan. He's dropped it. This oh, is God. try time. Pick anyone from three. into each other that is an awful error and they have paid the big price you have to call on quick situations like that Chickler wanted it and it was just enough to put the fullback Redlinski in two minds they came up and the big fella said I'll have another easy try all the time it really takes it out of you that have dominated the Super League since it started in 1996. And the reason why we've got these top players is for one reason only. They are quality people, and you need a quality star to make a very good team. I know a lot of people say that one man does not make the team, but when you look through this list, those men would play anywhere for any team in any country at international level. Number six is Chris Radlinski. Yeah, solid. Get the ball in the air, he's not going to miss it. His positional play is quite superb, but the one thing that I have really feel that has developed over the years as he got older is his ability to read the game. He just knows when something's going to happen. Maybe if a little breakdown on the inside. He knows to skirt it. He's a good reader of the game. Great play. Steve-O, in this list, a lot of people will think that we don't know much about the game because of all the people we've left out. Hang on. <laughs> they may say it about you, but I played. At least I know something about it. Well, that's open to debate. But mm. the people we've missed out are the likes of Bobby Goulding, the St. Helens captain, 96-97 at the start of Super League, did brilliantly. 
Steel Wretchless, the London Broncos tackling machine. What was it, 60 odd tackles in one match? Unbelievably. But as chairman of the Hookers Union, you've got two number nines in the top 10. And at number five is Kieran Cunningham. I would have liked Kieran to be a little bit higher, but it's a fact that he's gone through so many seasons carrying an injury. He's back to his best now. And when he first started getting into it, there was no better runner from the dummy half position. He is without equal. The man can read it, and he has this wonderful ability to know if the tacklers are very slow to get into the first and second marker position, what does he do? He pinpoints them, runs at them deliberately, and the referee gives away the penalty. He's a thinker, and that's why he's in the top. And he can also plunder a try from dummy half with about two metres to go, can't he? Listen, with so much strength, very, very easy. Very difficult to stop. Surprise, surprise, another hooker comes in at number four. James Lowe's. You've got a love affair with this fella since he hung up his boots. Well, he hates me to bits. I, mean, I suppose you can call it a love affair, but there's often a love-hate relationship through it. And he was a man that, well, he was fiery. And often, he was the man at Bradford that would just run around the back telling everybody, you know, lift again, lift again, do it this way, do it that way. He never stopped talking. Hookers never do. Hookers get on the nerves of referees all the time. But he knew he had this wonderful way of just turning maybe the referee's thinking a little bit. And there were other times when the referee would do the thinking themselves, show him a red card and say, see you later. <laughs> but he was a great player. He, he sadly is no longer in the Super League. And Bradford, ever since he's finished playing, they have missed a proper hooker like Jimmy Lowe's. Yeah, they certainly have. And uh, I, I think a lot of people criticise me because I keep bringing it up. You've already brought it up now. But the man was quality. Come to the derby. Oh, that's great stuff. OK, we've shown you some wonderful solo tries, and we now focus on those that are the result of brilliantly coordinated team efforts. Yes, the modern game of Super League is more and more about team play. Coming up are the great passing tries in which teamwork and individual skill is beautifully stitched together. Yeah, you know, we really had to rack our brains to come up with the title for this section, didn't we? <laughs> it took us a long time, but we got there in the end. Yeah, after much head-scratching and deliberation, we've called this Great Team Tries. And we kick it off with a package of specials from the one and only Danny Maguire. <laughs> oh, what a ball round the corner. It didn't reach the first man from Lauatiti, but it got to McKenna and Leeds playing with great confidence here. Already, we've only had five minutes. They lead 6-0. Maguire, bullet pass, it's Marcus Bay again. And he has Keith Senior on his inside. And Senior stands in the tackle, gives it to Maguire. Oh, Leeds get a ten-point lead. Source of trouble at St. Helens on this right-hand side in defence. Kept his goal, but how cool was this from Senior? They do have danger all over the field, despite the fact that the likes of Long and Sculthorpe are not out there. And Mickey Hyam, I don't think anyone should underestimate the great loss that Mickey Hyam has been to this St. Helens side. But here comes Marcus Pye! And Marcus Pye has got Maguire! It's going to be a hat-trick for Maguire! It's going to be a hat-trick for Danny Maguire! And he will equal Paul Newlove's record! Watch this, Marcus Pye! They hang off! You've got to make sure you go as a one unit in a straight line. And soon as Marcus Bay gave the standoff, he knew it was try number three, hat trick time for the number six. You skip to Ward. To the line! Come on! Diskin again, Sinfield. Kevin Brown was hunting the interception. Lawatiti just brushed him off, got the ball away to McKenna. Here comes Chris McKenna, there's Danny Maguire again, a little jink inside, Maguire's off once more, this time the pass to Mathers, they have men on the overlap this way, Mathers to Senior, and Senior to Maguire again, Danny Maguire has that! But what about the big fella, Lauatiti, has had much opportunity, but when he uploaded, McKenna found it on the inside, look at the step here, got his balance, and what great play from Richie Mathers. He could have come straight down, it would have stopped. And then Senior, Julian O'Neill throws a dummy. Should have gone low, didn't. Johnson, great support, 
Watch how the way that O'Connolly comes back on the inside. He read that absolutely superb. Wonderful. Here we see from a different angle. Lamb. Watch the attempted tackle. Through the dummy. New Love couldn't do anything about it. But watch Connolly coming back on the inside. Boy, he read it superbly. final between Wigan and Hull will go down as one of the great finals that's a great ball from Kenny and he finds David Stevenson and Stevenson has got Henderson Gill outside him Henderson Gill all the way down the line here comes Gary Kemble and the Kiwi has missed him and Henderson Gill over for the try oh how about the cheeky grin Henderson Gill with the try for Wigan it all came about by poor defense from Hull they came off the wing look at that there's three on one, beautiful pass from Kenny to Stevenson. And Henderson Gill set sail for the line. Kemble can't do anything about that. He knows he has the pace and the power. What an effort. On the attack, looking for something special from Robbie Paul. And perhaps Robbie Paul can produce it again. Wonderful change of direction, great step. And that is the first ever hat-trick scored by anyone in history in a Wembley Challenge Cup final. Robbie Paul. Beautiful quick play of the ball. You can see the one and two markers. They were caught napping. And look at the speed and the style. What a step. Superb hat-trick. There you see the markers well and truly out of the way. Watch how he just off the balance, off the right, and then goes on the arc. They expected him to step again. He stayed in a straight line, right underneath the sticks. Oh, then trying to cut down this big deficit. They have the runners here. It's Lulawai. He's broken the first tackle. He's gone round Sean Edwards. Mike Ford in hot pursuit. But James Lulawai with the pace and scores the try. Beautiful offload. Watch how he goes through the gap. Pulls in the defence. Bang! Look how he steps now. What wonderful balance. Pulls away. Ford hasn't got the pace. He knows he's there. The Kiwi has put Hull well and truly back in this game. So Wigan underneath their own post. The ball with Martin Afire. And Afire saw the gap. Neil Harmon couldn't get to him. He was left clutching its straws. It's Martin of Fire now. He's only got Alan Tate to beat. He goes on the arc around Alan Tate. And Martin of 